welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, then welcome. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Uh, let's talk about some neutral matte eyeshadows, shall we? Because you've probably seen the palette that's going around that has 30 of them in there, and I'm here to say nobody needs 30 matte neutral eyeshadows. Literally nobody does. Here's the palette that I'm talking about. There are many issues that I have with this palette. I mean, the outside art, not my thing. The name, definitely not my thing. The shade names, they make my eye twitch. Uh, but overall, what I wanna focus on is the row upon row upon row of matte neutral eyeshadows that not even a working artist needs this, truly. I, I really have to feel, and I'm not a makeup artist, I'm not, but I really have to feel that a makeup artist is skilled at using what they have in order to create the shades they need, if that makes sense. I can't imagine any working artist walking around with a 30 pan palette, first of all with orgy written on the front of it, but like, let's move past that, but 30 neutral eyeshadows plus whatever other assorted colors they may have to, to provide options to their clientele, this is just massive. And a lot of these shadows, honestly, once they're blended out, are going to look the same. There's really not gonna be any discernible distinction between a lot of them. So what I have done is I have gone through my collection of single shadows, I have pulled out nine, and I've created my own little custom matte neutral eyeshadow palette. Let's take a look. These are the shades that I think are all you need, honestly. Now, granted, different skin tones might want deeper options or lighter options, but I've tried to create a bit of a gradient here, some a little bit warmer, some a little bit cooler. I've omitted the white because I really don't think a lot of people get a ton of use out of white, um, but these are the ones. And so I'm gonna pull them out and just show you them individually. I'll do arm swatches and then we're gonna move on. I don't anticipate this being a wildly long video because it's nine shadows, it's really not that much to talk about. Uh, so we'll start with the one that just fell out. I will say MAC shadows, not the most magnetic. They're really, really not. But at any rate, I'll be right back. I gotta pull these out of here and I have fake nails on and that makes it far more difficult than it needs to be. Be right back. All right, so I've got them all out in what I think is a bit of a gradient here. Forgive me, I've tried to lump them towards like cooler slash more neutral, warmer, and then the really darker options. Uh, at least that's just what works in my mind, but that's the joy of singles is that they can be arranged however it works for you. So let's just dive into it. With the exception of one Makeup Forever shadow, these are all from Makeup Geek or MAC. Just simply what I have on hand. I'm sure there's a lot of indie brands out there that have some excellent options as well, but this is what I have to work with. So these are the ones that I pulled, obviously. So up first is Omega. This is a MAC eyeshadow. And I'm just gonna, like I said, just do some arm swatches. I'm not great, let's take the watch off. I'm not great at describing like the undertones and the shades and all that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna let the swatches kind of speak for themselves. In case anybody is interested, there is no primer. These are just dry swatches. But what I like about Omega is that it really does add definition like to the crease, but it's not overwhelming. So if you are on the more fair side, you're still gonna be able to see it, but it's not gonna be like really stark, harsh contrast. So how I even came to know about this shade is from watching John McClain. And if you've ever watched any of John's videos, I'm not sure of the pronouns, so I'm gonna say they have very, very fair skin, very fair skin, and this is the shade that they often reach for. And it works beautifully on their skin. So even if you're a little bit deeper, like I have far more pigment in my skin than John McLean does, but this is still a really nice, soft transition shade on me. If you have incredibly deep skin, obviously that's not gonna work, but I'm working with what I have. <laughs> so these shades, if you're somewhat reminiscent of me, these are my recommendations. However, Omega from MAC. Next up is Barcelona Beach from Makeup Geek. 
and it's very similar, although I find that it is a titch darker and a titch cooler, like a little bit more of a gray base. And this one works as a really nice like contour shade as well, like on the face and like through the socket and things like that. So there is another one there. Again, like I said, they do look very similar. There are differences, but you can see. Again, like I said, I'm gonna let the swatches do the talking here. So then I do have one Makeup Forever shade, and this is M549. All of their shades are numbers, so there's no name to it per se. But this is one that I like to use whenever I just want like a one and done kind of shadow. Like if I just wanna throw something in the crease and then throw some mascara on and head on out the door, this is the shade that I use for that. It's just so very nice and cool toned without being super ashy. It adds good definition into the crease without being overwhelming about it. And it's just one of those shades that I do reach for over and over again, especially lately where I have not been wearing a ton of makeup. And these pans are huge, frankly, so they're a good, good little investment. Not overly expensive, I can't remember exactly how much they are, they usually have like bundle options. Um, but again, that's M549, it's a fantastic shade. It's just so easy to use and you can also use it like on your face for contour and whatnot, but I really, really like that one. The next shade is from MAC and this one is Charcoal Brown. So you can see it's getting a little bit deeper here. I'd also argue it's a little bit warmer, although I think it's like a fairly like dead even neutral kind of shade. Again, I'm not great. Like I can tell if it's like wildly warm or like very obviously cool, but once it hits that like neutral ground, I'm always kind of like second guessing myself. Anyways, you can see it here. It's like, it, this is the kind of shade that I would use for um, going like deeper into the crease to really build up the definition, going on the outer, maybe half of the eyelid, things like that. I just, I mean, I can't really say it's a pretty color per se. I don't really think any of these are pretty. It's just the function that they play, right? So there we have it. Okay, I'm gonna do the next three in sort of rapid fire succession here. They're all from MAC. So the first one here is Soft Brown. An oldie but a goldie. All right, for the interest of full disclosure, I had swatched two more shades Realized one of them wasn't as warm as I thought it was going to be. It looked far more similar to charcoal brown. So I wiped those two off. I've got two other shades, but I don't want to refill me showing you my nine palette, like my nine shadows in the palette. So there's one that's different. I will explain. Okay, so this one here again is soft brown. And then this one is brown script. And then the one that I switched out I have replaced it with this one from Makeup Geek, which is Bitten. And that's just so that there are these like warmer tones, but of varying depths. Just so that if you wanted to just do a warm look, you could have like, well, three options, like a, a gradient, if you will. So the one that I took out was um, Brown Down, and that's only because it looked very, very similar to this shade right here. Okay, I just wanted to, to put that out there in case anybody like really takes a really close look at the nine shadows in the pan. They're like, wait a second, Bitten's not in there. I know what Bitten looks like. I'm not trying to pull one over on you. I just changed my mind. Okay, that leaves us with two more. Both of these are from Makeup Geek. Let me get them on my fingers and away we go. All right, so the first one it's gonna be a really deep brown. This one is called Grunge, and then Corrupt, which is about as matte of a black as you can get. This one ranks right up there with the, um, the black shade from the Wayne Goss palette that I reviewed recently. They're probably my two, my two favorite black shadows. So anyways, there you can see I mean, I, I stayed away from like the bone colored shades and the like stark white personal preference. I never personally get a ton of use out of those kind of shades. And if we're trying to like narrow it down, that's what I've done here. And that's why it starts as deep, I guess, as Omega is, which frankly isn't really all that deep. Okay, so those are the nine shades that I would recommend. Like if you're, if you're looking to build 
a matte neutral brown palette, rather than dropping 62 US on 30 shades, a lot of which are just redundant and unnecessary, I really feel with that palette, I'll stick it back up here again, you could knock out row two and row four, just go with one, three, and five, and you would still have too many shades, but you would still be able to work with it. Or alternatively, like take that top row out, stick with two, three, take four out, stick with five, you know what I mean? Like there did not need to be this many shades in there at all. Uh, because if you have a deeper shade, but you want it to be lighter, just blend it out. <laughs> You don't have to pack on the pigment. You don't have to build it up to full opacity. I mean, it's harder to do with something like a black, but like go in with a deeper brown then. If you're looking to deepen up the outer corner or line the lashes or something like that, it doesn't have to be black. And I think like this is a workable kind of arrangement here. You have more neutral options, cooler tones, warmer tones. You've got the gamut. You've got the gradient. You can make it work. There may be times, obviously, when you only have nine shadows, there may be times where you're like, well, I really wish I had a whatever, and you might not have it, but like, you don't need a 30 pan palette. And certainly you don't need one that's anywhere near as cringy as that one. That, that, is a, that is a gripe all in its own, and that's not what the focus of this video really is, because to each their own, and if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you, that's totally fine. Like, I, for one, don't want to do a tutorial and film it and put it out onto the internet where I'm talking about applying cunnilingus to my outer corner. Like I just, I don't, I am not a prude and I know a lot of people have said that that I've heard talking about this palette. I truly am not. Have you watched my live streams? Have you heard me talk about BDB? I will share. I will go down that particular little rabbit hole. But I don't want the shade glory hole in one of my palettes. I don't. And I don't want Jeffree Star in a spread eagle position on the front of a giant ass palette. Like I just, I just don't. And I don't think that you need it because you don't need the shades that are in that palette. If you want to buy it, that's your choice. That is completely up to you. Who am I to say what to do with your money? I'm just here to provide some alternatives to maybe start a conversation about this kind of thing. I would love to hear from actual makeup artists. Like, what do you carry in your kit? Do you carry a gajillion shades so that you have an option for every opportunity? Or do you work with what you have and get creative with it? Because, I mean, they're like, foundation. Do, do you carry 40 shades of foundation? Or do you mix and match and create custom shades? Because I, I feel like you would, because otherwise you'd be carrying around like an entire trunk full of options and it would just wouldn't be practical and things would go bad before you could use them and like it would just be a nightmare. Uh, but regardless, I'm not a working artist. I never have been. I don't think I ever will be. So what do I know? All I know is just from a consumer's perspective, I don't want to drop 62 US, which and my money is going to be over $80 here in Canada, plus the cost of shipping, plus the duties and import fees. Like that's going to be a, literally a $100 palette for shades like Cunnilingus and Glory Hall. And I'm not going to get use out of a bunch of those. Or it's going to be one of those palettes where I stare at it and I'm like, like a deer in the headlights because I don't know which particular shade of taupe is the shade that I, like it's overwhelming, it's far too much. Nine pans would have been sufficient in my opinion. So at any rate, that's it. That's the video. Sound off down below. Like, do I need 30 shades? Do you think I do? I don't know, convince me, that's fine. Let's have a debate, that's totally fine with me. Um, or if you agree with me, I love hearing that too. I truly do, it makes my heart happy when you're like, yeah, Kara, you're right. Um, who doesn't love to hear that? Anyways, that is it. I just heard the car door shut outside, so that means my kids are going to descend upon me very momentarily, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.